they probably can find some hostages. But the problem they face is if they go after the hostages that they can find, uh, Hamas will kill them. Hamas has made it clear that that's the policy now. And that deters the Israelis from going after the prisoners. I wouldn't be surprised if the Israelis know where some of the prisoners are, but just are not willing to go after them because it would end up uh, with those prisoners dying. What matters is that when Israel went to war against Hezbollah, when they assassinated Nasrallah, when they invaded southern Lebanon, when they started pounding uh, southern Beirut and a lot of the villages in southern Lebanon, all of this was designed to stop the firing of rockets and missiles into northern Israel. That's why the Israelis, you know, turned up the heat on Hezbollah. And what's happened is, if anything, Hezbollah has increased the number of rockets that it's firing at Israel. Killing Nasrallah did no good. Invading southern Lebanon did no good. Bombing southern Beirut did no good. Uh, so this uh, incident where at least four Israeli soldiers were killed, this was the Golani Brigade, it was an elite brigade, uh, that they targeted very effectively is just evidence that Israel's policy against Hezbollah is not working, just like its policy against uh, Hamas is not working, and just like its policy against Iran will not work. Well, Mearsheimer's insights bring a powerful perspective to Israel's ongoing struggles with Hezbollah, Hamas, and broader regional dynamics. The takeaway is clear. Israel's traditional military strategies are failing to secure the results they intend, and these policies risk inciting greater resistance, rather than subduing it. Let's explore why, and what this means for Israel's security and the region's stability. One of the immediate crises is the fate of hostages held by Hamas. As Mearsheimer explains, even if Israel knows where some of the hostages are located, they hesitate to attempt rescues because of the high probability that Hamas would execute those hostages in retaliation. Hamas's stated policy of killing any hostages in the event of a rescue attempt has effectively stalled Israeli efforts. The challenge Israel faces here isn't just tactical, it's a moral dilemma. The government must weigh the lives of the hostages against the risk of escalating violence or further retaliation. Every potential operation to free these captives becomes a life-or-death calculus, not just for those imprisoned but for the broader population, which could face the consequences of an escalated conflict. Israel has historically aimed to suppress Hezbollah, a group it sees as a serious threat on its northern border. In Mearsheimer's analysis, past efforts to dismantle or weaken Hezbollah have largely failed. After assassinating Nasrallah and launching offensives in southern Lebanon, Israel hoped to curb the rocket fire threatening northern Israel. Yet these operations have been met not with surrender, but with escalation. Hezbollah's response was not to back down but to increase rocket attacks, leaving Israel's northern border just as vulnerable as before. In fact, the recent targeted strike on Israel's Golani Brigade, a highly trained, elite unit, has highlighted Hezbollah's ongoing strength and tactical capabilities. This setback demonstrates that Israel's pressure tactics are not deterring Hezbollah. Instead, they are emboldening it. And this creates a cycle of aggression without an apparent end. One of Mearsheimer's central arguments is that Israel's approach, often marked by overwhelming force, has failed to deter its adversaries in a lasting way. This same pattern appears with Hamas in Gaza, with Hezbollah in Lebanon, and could also extend to Iran. What this indicates is that each attempt to solve these issues through force is met with resilient opposition, leading to even more significant retaliation from these groups. If Israel's objective is to secure peace for its citizens, the reality is that its strategy is only achieving short-term gains at best. Each campaign sees Hamas and Hezbollah adapt, expand their arsenals, and refine their tactics. For example, Hezbollah has consistently increased its rocket range and accuracy, and Hamas has diversified its tactics with tunnels, surprise attacks, and now the holding of hostages, making each successive Israeli military campaign less effective in delivering long-term security. Iran is another crucial player, as it backs both Hezbollah and Hamas. 
Mearsheimer's point about Israel's inability to achieve lasting results against Iran is another example of how regional dynamics complicate Israel's security strategy. An open conflict with Iran would likely draw in other regional powers and potentially lead to wider hostilities. The risk of involving Iran isn't just about military strength. It's about creating a scenario where the Middle East is pulled into a multi-front conflict involving Hezbollah, Hamas, and other Iran-aligned groups. Iran has shown it has the resources and willingness to support these groups, even when faced with economic and political pressures at home. And as Mearsheimer implies, Israel's current approach may serve to rally more regional support for Iran's stance against Israel rather than isolate Tehran. We can see how Iran defend Israel's strikes few weeks ago, and with the support of Russia for Tehran, Israel might be digging its own grave. Israel's campaigns in Lebanon and Gaza have come at a high cost. The bombings of southern Beirut, destruction of infrastructure, and displacement of civilians have left deep scars. While Israel frames these actions as defensive, aimed at neutralizing rocket attacks, they also result in the tragic reality of significant civilian harm and displacement. This destruction doesn't just harm those directly affected. It often fuels anti-Israel sentiment across the Arab world, empowering Hezbollah and Hamas recruitment efforts. Each wave of violence has strengthened the narrative within Lebanon and Gaza that Israel is an aggressor. This perception makes it easier for Hezbollah and Hamas to gain support among their populations, portraying themselves as defenders against Israeli attacks. The damage caused by Israel's bombings thus inadvertently aids these groups by rallying local support, creating a self-sustaining cycle of violence and counterviolence. The recent attack on Israel's elite Golani Brigade has been particularly telling. This isn't just any unit, it's one of Israel's best trained and most capable. Hezbollah's success in targeting such a unit signals their improved capability and sends a strong message to Israel. Despite Israel's best efforts, Hezbollah is not only intact but has grown stronger and more capable of precision strikes. This incident has forced a re-evaluation of Israel's approach to dealing with Hezbollah, as it challenges the effectiveness of relying solely on high-powered military units to handle asymmetric warfare situations. For Israel, this represents a strategic conundrum. If one of its most elite units is vulnerable to Hezbollah's attacks, the broader Israeli military strategy may need to be reconsidered. Relying on elite brigades and airstrikes has not subdued Hezbollah's resistance, and the losses suffered are raising questions about how sustainable this approach truly is. Mearsheimer's critique suggests that Israel's policies need a fundamental shift. While overwhelming force has been the traditional response, it is evident that this approach does not bring the lasting security Israel seeks. As history has shown, diplomatic solutions have sometimes proven more effective than military ones in the region. An alternative might involve negotiated ceasefires, peace talks, or even third-party mediation, as past efforts have sometimes yielded temporary peace in regions of entrenched conflict. Mearsheimer's analysis underlines that while such negotiations can be complex and politically challenging, the costs of continued military campaigns are likely to be higher, both in human terms and in terms of regional stability. Israel's security situation is undeniably complex, with threats on multiple fronts and deeply entrenched historical conflicts. But as Mearsheimer highlights, the current policies are not producing the intended results. The policy of military domination has led to significant losses, both for Israel and its adversaries, without fostering a secure or stable environment. It's a sobering realization that, despite the strength and capabilities of the Israeli defense forces, victory through force alone appears unattainable. A shift towards sustainable peace may require Israeli leaders to adopt a new perspective, one that embraces diplomacy, acknowledges the realities on the ground, and seeks solutions beyond the battlefield. As Mearsheimer's observations suggest, the challenges Israel faces will likely require innovation, courage, and a willingness to consider alternatives that have been previously dismissed. Peace in this context might not come from overwhelming force but from a commitment to addressing underlying issues, regional cooperation, and long-term diplomatic solutions. Mearsheimer's message is ultimately one of caution. Continuing down this path of force without results risks a never-ending cycle of violence. The time may be ripe for a reassessment, not only for Israel's sake, but for the broader goal of regional peace and stability. According to John Mearsheimer, they probably can find some hostages, 
But the problem they face is if they go after the hostages they can find, Hamas will kill them. Hamas has made it clear that's their policy now, and that deters the Israelis from trying to rescue these prisoners. I wouldn't be surprised if the Israelis know where some of the prisoners are, but are not willing to go after them, because it would end up with those prisoners dying. When Israel went to war against Hezbollah, assassinated Nasrallah, invaded southern Lebanon, and started bombing southern Beirut and the villages in southern Lebanon, all of this was intended to stop rockets and missiles from being fired into northern Israel. But instead, Hezbollah has only increased rocket attacks. Killing Nasrallah did no good. Invading southern Lebanon did no good. Bombing southern Beirut did no good. This recent incident with the Golani Brigade, one of Israel's elite units, suffering casualties from Hezbollah, is just more evidence that Israel's policies against Hezbollah, Hamas, and even Iran are failing. Thanks for watching.